In the last part, we made an arena for the player to roll around in to get the pickups. Now this is the coolest part of the series where we get to add in action packed stuff like getting the player to move around and to rotate the pickups. Starting off with just that, rotating the pickups with the help of blueprints. And what is a blueprint? Blueprint is like a schematic or a diagram of an object and it also has a node based scripting system that gives you the ability to add functionalities to the said object. Though when you hear something about blueprints, it is most likely referring to the visual scripting part. When the project was made, there were two options, blueprints and C++. The project was created using blueprints and that's the one plan to be used throughout the series. C++ on the other hand is a popular programming language and is the language that is used here in Unreal. In order to make a new blueprint, go to the content browser, right click to view a pop-up menu and select the blueprint class option. A list of parent classes will appear, each have their own little description on what they are. For pickups, they are just rotating cubes and it doesn't require any inputs. So I believe the actor class seems to be the best choice here. Lastly, we give it a name. Usually it's good practice to prefix the name with blueprints or BP for short. So I'm going to call it BP underscore pickups. There is another way to make blueprint and I'm just going to show you with this sphere here. Or let me just delete this duplicate one. In the details panel, there is a blue button that says blueprint slash add. Click on it will convert it to a blueprint, but first it needs to know where to save it and what's its name. I'm not going to continue on from this, so I'm going to cancel out and I'm just going to continue from the pickup blueprint that was made before. Double clicking on the blueprint will open a new editor like window that displays the pickup in its own world. The arena isn't here because the blueprint is dedicated to making the looks and the functionality of the pickup. Here's a quick rundown of the blueprint editor in here. On the right side, there is the details panel like we have seen back here in Unreal Editor. At the top left corner, there is the components panel, which will display the parts that make up the object. And right underneath is the My Blueprint panel, which, is, which contains like a list of functions and variables that are associated to the visual scripting aspect of the blueprint. In addition, there are two tabs next to the viewport, the construction script, which execute any code here once the object gets placed into the level or gets updated from the editor, but we don't have to worry about messing with this in this series. And the event graph, which is where the functionalities of the object will be written in and gets executed when we play the game. So the rotation code for the pickup will go here. Also an important note to point out is the compile button up here. Before testing out the blueprint, it's good to compile the changes to see if there were any errors. It also has an icon that indicates if it has been changed, succeeded, or failed. If there are any errors, it will notify you down here in the compiler results panel. With all that, let's start making the pickup. First, I'm going to add a new component called cube. There is a cube object like we have seen before, and I'm going to get rid of the default scene root by dragging dropping it onto it to make the cube to be the parent. So that's it for the looks of it. It was pretty simple and the compile button has that question mark. So I'm going to compile to make sure nothing is broken. Next, to make them rotate. In the event graph, you can navigate around by holding down the right mouse button and dragging it around and zoom in and out with the middle mouse button. By default, there are three nodes event begin play event actor begin overlap and event tick we only need the last one the event tick which is the function that gets called every frame to start off i'm going to make three variables to represent the rotation speed so this is going to be called roll speed and in the details panel it can give you information about that variable make sure to have the variable type to be set to float and back over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this variable twice to make the pitch and the yaw variables. Lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop them into the event graph 
and I'm going to choose get roll speed. And I'm going to do the same thing for the pitch and the yaw as well. And I'm just going to move them up a little bit and organize them. Next, we need to add in a function that makes up the rotate. We can right click or drag this white arrow out here to create a new node. I'm going to type in add actor local rotation and select that one. So we have three variables and this function only takes in two, the target and the delta rotation. The target should be this object, also known as self, the pickup. However, the delta rotation seems like it can only take in one wire, one number. So in other words, we need to figure out how to combine these three numbers into one. The next node I'm going to add in is called make rotator. It sounds promising. It takes in three floats and it outputs one. I'm going to connect the variables to the node. And before I continue, I'm going to put and before I continue, I can have this return value go to delta rotation. However, it would be rotating frame dependent. In other words, it would rotate every frame which can make the motion look inconsistent. I'm going to make a frame independent by using time by first adding in a node that can multiply. There are different types of multiply nodes, so we need to know the types of variables that we are combining. The delta seconds is a float and rotator is its own type, rotator. So we need something that can take those two. So scale rotator seems to fit the situation. Connecting the return value and the delta seconds to the scale rotator by their colors, then taking the output into delta rotation, we have now made a frame independent motion. One last thing to do is comment. Press C to make a comment and just drag the edges around the nodes to wrap them. Where it says comment, I'm just going to simply write out rotate the cube. Let's compile and save. Over here in the main editor, we can drag and drop the blueprint from the content browser into the level. I'm just gonna raise this up a little bit. After it gets selected in the details panel, we can adjust the variables that we made and play to test out the speed. And there it is, it's rotating. Now it's going to attract the player to pick it up. Thanks to Blueprint's visual scripting system. And that's the end of this part. However, if you're coming from Unity, please stick around just for a little bit. I'm going to try to make an analogy between the two engines about blueprints. Here in Unity, we can create a prefab for the pickup. Once we do make one, we can view it in its own world. Very similar to Unreal when we created our very first blueprint class. We can edit the components and the game objects. However, Unity does not have a visual scripting system inside this prefab world. Though if you check out the asset store, there are visual scripting assets you can try out. But at this time in recording and version of Unity, it does not have one that's inbuilt into prefabs. Who knows? Perhaps there will be one coming out in a later update of, of Unity. So that's it for this part. If you want to learn, if you want more information about blueprints, there are a few links to the documentation in the description. We'll be using it to make the player and the movement next and the user interface in a later part. I hope this was a good intro to blueprints and I will see you in the next level. Bye.